Causes are real. And so many people have been accosted, not necessarily because of any fault of theirs, but because of their roots and their heritage. And many don't have any clue how to navigate these invisible barriers that cannot be seen and yet undeniable. And this includes believers alike. According to Proverb 26 verse 2, As the bed by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the cause costless shall not come. So we do agree that causes do come, but not without a cause or a reason. Today we shall be learning how causes come and how also to identify them. Hallelujah. And also the cure and solution. So pay attention prayerfully and I know the Lord shall wrought mighty miracle in your life today. Before I proceed, I tell you a story. Once upon a time, in Asian African dynasty, a king was normally buried alongside his subjects. So one day, a king was attracted to a beautiful damsel and he went after her, asked for her hand in marriage, and the beautiful lady consented and thereby made her his wife and, and she became his favorite wife. But the excitement didn't last for long because he took ill and eventually he died. So there was a custom in that place. So the elders of that very dynasty came and they started selecting those that will accompany him onto the great beyond. And so they selected some few servants and how could they forget his favorite? And so they approached her and said, you're going to do great honor to serve the king now in the afterlife. And so when she got the understanding of what was needed of her, that is to lay down her life for him, she became completely disheartened, heartbroken, and she started crying. And she reasoned with them that she's just a young lady and this king had lived out his life. They should allow her to enjoy the gift of life. But they said, no, it's an honor, and that is the ritual. It must be done. So, out of desperation, she cried, and she laid a curse. She said, she swore and said, as long as the family the line, the hair of this dynasty remain on earth. There will never be a girl that will surpass her age. And she was around 27 or thereabout. And out of anguish, she died. So as time went on, generation to generation, and they kept dying. So there appeared a generation that knew Christ, partook about the untimely death of all their ladies. Literally, none of them hardly even get to be married. And they went and inquired. And the man of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, God revealed to him what had happened in generation past. Amen. And that was how they started crying, pleaded the blood of Jesus before the cause was averted. So, that could be the condition of so many believers alike. Because the cause causeless shall not come. As a matter of fact, not everyone is walking under the same heaven or the same earth. The heaven under you and the earth beneath you could be different from the heaven under me and the earth beneath me. Because of the spiritual forces working in your life could be different from those that are working in my life. If you don't believe me, let the Bible settle this. Deuteronomy 28, 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, 
and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. So with that being said, how do I identify a cause? How do I know if I'm under a cause? So literally, when everything is hard to make it work, trouble upon trouble, every time you do a thing, it appears it has to take in your blood. Great vexation of spirit when you go out and great vexation of spirit when you come in. Everyone will have their matters sorted out, but when it comes to your turn, always stories upon stories. When it is morning, sometimes you feel it should be night. When it is night, you feel it should be morning. Literally, there is no peace. And that could be in everything in your life. Starting from health, children, finances, relationship, marriages, career, place of work, education, etc., etc., etc. Literally, you just know that something is opposing you. You labor through the sweat of your brows with little to show for it. Close success syndrome seem to be order of the day. Always. Haggai chapter 1, 9 to 11 says it like so. You look for much and lo, it come to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon all the labor of the hand. So there you have it. So what are some of the major causes, sources of a curse? Number one, the curse of God. Hebrews 10, 13. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Praise the Lord. The curse of God has many variations. One of them is the cause of stealing. In Zechariah chapter 5, verse 3. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off, as on the side, according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as unto that side. For I will bring forth, said the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Hallelujah. So you could say it like this, cause of stealing cause of false swearing in the name of the Lord. So when the cause comes, it will dwell there until it consumes everything. May the Lord have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have taken anything that is not yours, then restitution is the way to go. Perhaps that could be the reason things are being the way they are. Praise the Lord. Number two, the cause of the law. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 16. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these causes shall come upon thee and overtake thee. As we all know, till verse 66, there are a barrage or catalog of causes. The cause of the law. It could be divided into three. The cause of poverty and the cause of sickness and the cause of death. So ranging from that 15 to 66 verse, you have the cause of poverty, the cause of sickness, and the cause of death. Amen. Number three, the cause of devils. Luke 13, 16. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these eighteen years, at be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day, whom Satan has bound? 
So her cause was because of Satan did something. And we saw Job. Job calamity was orchestrated by Satan. He brought upon Job all those causes. So sometimes once one has true evil, he becomes the focal target. Praise the Lord. So, but it's expected of us as believers to stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has set us free. Amen. Because when you do good, he hates you for it. But he's already a liar and a failure in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, causing the bless attracts a cause. Causing a man or a woman that is blessed by God or anointed by God attracts a cause. And permit me to say, now in this generation more than ever, this appears to be one of the major key areas by which causes are attracted into many people, believers' lives inclusive. 2 Kings 2.24 And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood, and tear forty and two children of them. Hallelujah. That's speaking about Elisha. Some little children were calling him, Hey, Balhead, hey, Balhead, hey, Balhead. And he got infuriated and cursed them. And two she bears came out of the wood and tore them. Amen. They were children. Don't forget that. They were children. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Not just physically, but with one's mouth, we could be committing harm. Amen? It's very good to expose work of darkness, but to be attacking people by their names, that is not wise. Praise the Lord. Hear what David says. In 1 Samuel 26 verse 9, And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Speaking of Saul, even though Saul had backslided, David recognized that he was anointed by God. And nobody will dare touch the anointed of God and be sinless or guiltless. Amen. And remember the person that brought the news of Saul's death was killed by David. And he knew that was a righteous thing. Because he had the opportunity to kill Saul. He tore the piece of his cloth. He was not a fool. Amen. There are many servants of God. They may have fallen based on our own understanding. But yet, if they had been anointed, it's best if we don't insult them. Hallelujah. We could expose the works of darkness, but to insult, oh, it's a dangerous thing. The Bible said, destroy it not, for there is blessing in it. Amen? But the scripture says, I will bless those that bless you and curse him that curse you. So you see that. Praise the Lord. So in other words, there are more that bless us and few that curse us. So it's a dangerous thing. Beware. If someone is blessed, take cover. Because anytime you attack, you're coming under a curse. Because God is the one that blessed them. So anytime you begin to curse them, you are under a curse automatically. Praise the Lord. So how do you know? That's why it's good to bridle one's tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is a caveat for so many people. Hallelujah. So check out your life. If you see there could be things that you don't know why they are consistent or persistent, then take note on that. Don't assume it might not be one of those things. Hallelujah. Number five, mocking the move of God, mocking what the Lord is doing in a particular season. Second King 7, 12 and 20. He talked about the man that mocked Elisha when he said tomorrow there will be food in Israel. When there was famine because the Assyrian besieged them and they seized their food and there was no supply of food to Israel. 
So there was famine in the land. And he said, you shall see with your eyes, but you will not partake of it. Because when the prophet prophesied, he mocked him. He said, even the Lord shall open the windows of heaven. Shall such thing become? And the Bible says, it came to pass in verse 20, that people rushed and he was stamped upon. The stampede was much and he died. How come he was the only one? It was the prophetic word that killed him. So be careful. Hallelujah. We have to use discretion in all of those. Because amiss, some people will come out and say it's a move of God. There is discretion and revelation. Hallelujah. Because actually the Bible says reproving the works of darkness. Exposing them. Amen. So that is our office. Defending the faith that was handed down. Amen. By the forefathers. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah 28, 21 to 22, it says, For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perazim, he shall be wrought as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. 22. Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord, God of hosts, a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. So, brethren, that is a caveat right there. Amen? Watch out. May the Lord give us the grace in Jesus' mighty name. Number six, cause of a man. You know, men could be very, very evil and wicked. Out of jealousy and envy, they lay a cause in the place of your job, your family, your neighbors, your schoolmates, even in the church. Some people out of envy and jealousy, they cast as passion, spells, charms, in order to prevent their fellow humans. And that's sad. Numbers 23, 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel, According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what had God wrought? Praise the Lord. So, the Bible says, no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. So, who are those fashioning? The blacksmith. They are men. They are not spirits. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number seven, the cause of trusting a man. Hallelujah. Trusting a man. That doesn't mean you shouldn't trust any man. It is not in that context the Bible is suggesting. Putting your faith and trust in a man to help you instead of God. God can use someone, no doubt. Yes, people could be reliable, but they shouldn't be the source of whatever you're expecting. Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, Cause be the man. That trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord so we see right there when you exchange the trust you are supposed to have on God to trusting in a man you are under a curse automatically amen some people for men's sake they will do all types of things instead of putting God first the Bible say, do not venerate or exalt man above that which is written. So what is written concerning man? Number one, man was created. From where? From the dust. What again about man is appointed unto man once to die? Alright? What again? Man will return to dust. So, and man will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone. So these are the things written concerning man. So, trusting a man or worshipping a man, that with whom you worship is under a curse. And the person that allows himself to be worshipped is under double curse. Amen. So, trusting your uncle rather than praying unto God to give me this, to give me that, I'm trusting my dad. 
and all of that brings a cause or attracts a cause. Amen? Or in relationship. Praise the Lord. That is not to say you'll be suspecting your spouse for no reason. No, that's not what we're saying. We're talking about things that could be done by God. You seek those execution or performance of those things from men. Amen? Even if you're going to the hospital, commit your way unto the Lord. Because God blesses doctors. Amen? To carry out operation. But while you're going through whatever, they're checking you. Let your mind be fixed on Christ, not on them. So they have all the money. They say, Doctor, if you can make me come out alive, I will pay you this. That was a very stupid statement. Amen. Because they are just men. And once God sees that, God could be provoked. Amen. May the Lord have mercy upon us in Jesus' mighty name. Reason number eight. The cause of following after other gods. Amen. In Psalm 16, verse 4, it's their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after other gods. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Hallelujah. So, some of us, some believers, visit psychic, some has visited witch doctors, warlocks. Babalao, Sangoma, all types of satanic mediums. Some have used tarot card, Ouija board, etc., etc., etc. Now, some are on zodiac signs. Go for palm reading. All of these things attract an immediate cause. Isaiah chapter 30, 1 to 2 says, Woe to the Rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover it with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. So you can see that. In all of these, God is absent. They are aware of power, but the source of the power is not from God. They are aware of protection, but the source of the protection is not from God. Such persons that practice those are already under a curse. The Bible says they will not know when good cometh. They will be like the heat in the desert. Do you know what the heat in the desert means? It means your, your life will be hard, hot. And you know what desert heat is like. Hallelujah. So that is it. Number 10, last but not the least, afterward the solution is coming. Self-inflicted causes. Many believers attracted causes by what they say. Amen. The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say. They are so negative. Oh, I am ugly. Oh, I am a failure. I am good for nothing. Especially ladies. Negative confessions. Not only does that attract cause upon one's life, when you think evil and wicked about yourself, it attracts that. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says, whatever is pure, what is, whatever is good, Whatever is of good report, lovely, think on those things. But you begin to think negative thoughts. Some believers, as a matter of fact, after prayers, they start confessing negatively. And they wonder why are they walking in cycle throughout that challenge. That's because they refuse to be transformed by the renewal of their minds. So, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The power of life and death lies in the tongue. Speak life, my friend. Don't curse yourself. Praise the Lord. So at this very point, if you have gained anything of value and you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so and the Lord shall bless you richly. And also make sure to like the video, share the video, 
so that others get to watch too that are passing through such dilemmas. Hallelujah, and the Lord shall surely bless you. And now, the solution is, number one, be born again. Be born again. If any man is in Christ, is now a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, everything is now new. Praise the Lord. So, but believers could be afflicted while they could be doing some of those things and you have them paying for it. So now that you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Because the Bible says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And true knowledge shall the just be delivered. So you've just heard some of the things that introduce causes in our lives. So you repent if you're already a believer. Amen. There's no sin God cannot forgive if a man is willing to repent. We cannot appropriate forgiveness without repentance. Praise the Lord. So at this very point, if you want to give your life to Christ, then repeat after me so that you might become a child of God. Say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again, that I may be a child of God, that I may be born again. Jesus, I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life and make me a child of God. Amen. Congratulations. If you've made that prayer, congratulations. There will be a number there. You could reach us. Amen. And pray with you further and help you in growing your faith. Hallelujah. Welcome to God's family. So number two, the cause of the law is averted by redemption. So the cause of the law is averted by redemption. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, causes everyone that hanged on a tree. Praise the Lord. So this is the reality. Christ has taken the cause. And when we stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has set us free, we refuse to be entangled again by the yokes of bondage. We remain resolute. Then the deliverance begins to be our experience in Jesus' mighty name. Number two, keep your faith alive. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, taking up the shield of faith. In Ephesians chapter 6, 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the very darts of the wicked. Hallelujah. So this is how to fight and make confession according to what is written. This is where you fight the good fight of faith, resisting everything that is not in line to what is written concerning you. Amen? This is a fight you must fight if you desire a change. Praise Master Jesus. The solution usually is simple if you are willing. Remember, there is no future for a lazy believer. Amen. Coupled with prayer and fasting and prophetic word, deliverance is sure to come your way. Amen. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in your word. I believe that you have set me free. Therefore, no cause, no divination, and no enchantment against me shall stand. And whosoever the Son of God sets free shall be free indeed. I decree my liberty by the blood of Jesus. For we overcame him, the devil, and the cause by the blood of the Lamb, and by the words of our testimonies. Now therefore I declare that I have been redeemed to reign on earth, not under a curse, not under a spell, but as a child of God, full of glory, full of honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I decree that I am free, and I am free indeed, in Jesus' mighty name. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I believe your word, and I receive your work of redemption through your blood. 
Therefore, no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. I decree judgment upon every cause that is trying to lay a hold of my life. Be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Because whosoever the Son of God set free shall be free indeed. And therefore I take my liberty. I stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has set me free. And I refuse to be entangled again by the yokes of bondage. If the blood of bulls and rams could atone for the sin of those that were in the Old Testament, how much more the blood of the Son of the living God will not set me free. If he took the blood of bulls or blood of lamb to set them free from the captivity of 430 years in Egypt, then my own life captivity is a walk over by the everlasting blood of the everlasting covenant, the blood of Jesus. Therefore, I take my deliverance by force of the blood of Jesus that speak better things than the blood of Abel. Jesus I stand firm and I stand fast in the veracity of the power of your blood. I overcome this devil and I overcome this curse by the blood of Jesus and by the words of my testimony. Thank you for setting me free and I'm free indeed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. You can keep rewatching this video. Amen until you soak every truth that is in need and you are surely going to testify to the glory of Jesus and to the shame of the devil. Amen. So, at this very juncture, I want to congratulate you for watching all through. Amen. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and share and like and the Lord shall richly bless you. Till I come your way again next time, Shalom.